Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we'll be looking at rockets, how it works, and what systems do they need to work. Let's begin. What is a rocket? A rocket is a vehicle that uses jet propulsion to accelerate without using the surrounding air. These rockets transport people or equipment beyond Earth's gravity and atmosphere. A rocket engine produces thrust by reaction to exhaust expelled at high speed. Rocket engines work entirely from propellant carried with the vehicle. Therefore, a rocket can fly in the vacuum of space. Parts of a rocket A rocket has four main types of parts or systems which are the structural system containing a nose cone, a frame and a fin, a propulsion system containing a fuel, oxidizer, pumps, nozzle, engine, the combustion chamber. And then the payload system which is the goods that it carries to space, the guidance system, which is the computer which guides the rocket. Now let's see about all the four systems. The structural system. The structural system is a frame that acts as a cover and protects the rocket from the outer elements. It is made up of materials that are both very powerful and lightweight solids, such as titanium and aluminium. A rocket must withstand the strong forces during launch and be as light as possible. For the main frame, most rockets use aerospace grade aluminium or titanium, since both metals are very strong but lightweight. Future rocket designers are even looking into using carbon composite structures, for example, the Starship. The payload system. The payload is an object transported into orbit by the satellite. The mission of the rocket determines the payload. The rockets have been adapted to launch satellites for various missions including communication, weather forecasting, spying, planetary exploration and observatories. Special rockets are now being developed to send people into Earth's orbit and into the moon's surface. The guidance system. The guidance system includes sensors, onboard computers, radars, and communication equipment. This system guides the course of the rocket. Now the crucial part of all the systems, the propulsion system. The propulsion system takes up the majority of the rocket's volume. Fuel or propellant tanks, pumps, and a combustion chamber makes up a propulsion system. There are three main categories of rocket propulsion system. Liquid rockets, solid rockets, and hybrid rockets. Now let's take a look at the different types of propulsion methods used in common. First, liquid propellant engines. 
A liquid engine of a rocket is based on liquid fuels unlike a solid motor with solid fuel. It is basic fuel is liquefied oxygen and hydrogen. The fuel is not stored in gas form because the energy density it can hold in kilogram is very low so you need a lot of gas. So the size and mass of the rocket increases eventually more than the rocket could lift. So when a very large amount of hydrogen fuel is liquefied it becomes more lightweight and you can store it in small spaces. You can shut it down, reduce or adjust speeds and reignite it. It can also be reused like the SpaceX Falcon 9 first stage motors. Now let's see how it works. For this, let's take a look at cryogenic engines, which are the most complex and most powerful engines, or to specify, most powerful liquid engines. We take hydrogen and oxygen first and run them through compressors and reduce its temperature and condense it to turn it into liquid. Then vehicles transport fuel close to the launch pad where the fuel will be loaded later on before launch. Now the engine section. Let's first understand what principles rockets work on. Newton's third law states that if there is an action there should be equal and opposite reaction. In this case the amount of thrust produced downwards should give a lift upwards against the amount of gravity. So now Taking close look in the engines, we have a pipeline connected to both the fuels oxidizer which is taken to an engine where it is injected and is ignited. Now the exhaust is maximized but still the speed of the hydrogen and oxygen are slow so the engine cannot produce enough thrust to take off. To solve this, we add pumps to the pipeline of LOX and LH2. These pumps require a lot of energy to pump it faster. We can't carry that much batteries to space. So we add a turbine to it and now we take a small amount of hydrogen and oxygen to the turbine and burn it. And now the turbine rotates and the pump also rotates. So because of the rotation in high speeds, we get a faster movement of hydrogen and oxygen. But we still have problems. The problem is we are wasting some fuel which can be recycled. Now we take the pipeline which connects hydrogen to the engine directly and replace it into the combustion chamber where the pump and the turbines are located and then we directly ignite the hydrogen and oxygen there and then we take the exhaust, spin the turbine send the rest of the exhaust to the engine and then that exhaust lightening up the other set of hydrogen which enters the engine and then we have combustion and then the engine takes off. So now we don't waste fuel plus we have greater thrust. So this is how cryogenic engines work or basically liquid engines work. This type of engine was only been able to develop in some countries because it's expensive and more complex. For example, the thermal covering in pipeline and engines require a lot of money to be spent and a lot of technology. And the insulation given above the fuel tanks and pipes should be strong or else some amount of high pressure hydrogen might leave cracks and opening where the hydrogen can escape from it. Major countries like the USA, Russia, Japan, France, China and India were the only countries who was able to make these type of cryogenic engines because of its complexity and the expenditure. Let me give a short brief about other type of liquid propulsion or engines. Monopropellant engines. As you see in the name, it's mono 
it means single so it is single propellant engines which only uses one of the two liquids that's the fuel the fuel is injected through the injector and is ignited by igniter because it doesn't have a oxidizer it won't perform well so most of the time these type of engines are used as rcs or reaction control system by propellant engines by propellant engines produce thrust by taking the fuel mostly hydrazine or monomethyl hydrazine and oxidizer mostly nitrogen tetroxide which is directly pumped into the fuel injectors and is ignited by a pyrotechnic igniter then the thrust is produced remember monopropellant and bipropellant does not have the expanded cycle or the gas generator cycle a solid propellant a solid propellant rocket or solid rocket is a rocket with a rocket engine that uses solid propellant that is fuel and oxidizer the earliest rockets were solid fuel rockets powered by gunpowder they were used in warfare by arabs chinese persians mongolians and the indians as early as 13th century all rockets used some form of solid or powder propellant up until the 20th century when liquid propellant rockets offered more efficient and controllable alternatives solid rockets are still used today in military weaponries worldwide model rockets solid rocket boosters and on larger applications for their simplicity and reliability since solid fuel rockets can remain in storage for an extended period without much propellant degradation and because they almost always launch reliably they have been frequently used in military applications such as missiles the lower performance of solid propellant as compared to liquids does not favor their use as primary propulsion in modern medium to large launch vehicles that are used to orbit commercial satellites however frequently used as strap on boosters to increase payload capacity or as spin stabilize add on upper stage when higher than normal velocities are required solid rockets are used as light launch vehicles for low earth orbit leo payloads under 2 tons or escape payloads up to 500 kg now the hybrid engines a hybrid propellant rocket is a rocket with a rocket motor that uses rocket propellants in two different phases one solid and the other either gas or liquid the hybrid rocket concept can be tracked back to the early 1930s hybrid rockets avoid some of the disadvantages of solid rockets like the dangers of propellant handling while also avoiding some disadvantages of liquid rockets like their mechanical complexity because it is difficult for the fuel and oxidizer to be mixed intimately hybrid rocket tend to fail more bendingly than liquid or solid like liquid rocket engines hybrid rocket motors can be shut down easily and the thrust is throttleable the theoretical specific impulse performance of hybrids is generally higher than solid motors and lower than liquid engines as high as 400s has been measured in a hybrid rocket using metallized fuels hybrid systems are more complex than solid ones but they avoid significant hazards of manufacturing shipping and handling solid rocket motors by storing the oxidizer and the fuel separately in its simplest form a hybrid rocket consists of a pressure vessel tank containing the liquid oxidizer the combustion chamber containing the solid propellant and a mechanical device separating the two when thrust is desired a suitable ignition source is introduced in the combustion chamber and the valve is opened the liquid oxidizer or gas flows into the combustion chamber where it is vaporized and then reacted with the solid propellant combustion occurs in boundary layer diffusion flame adjacent to the surface of the solid propellant generally the liquid propellant is the oxidizer and the solid propellant is a fuel because the solid oxidizers are extremely dangerous and lower performing than liquid oxidizers Furthermore, using a solid fuel such as hydroxyl terminated polybutadiene 
एच टी पी बी और पैरफिन वैक्स अलोज फॉर द इनकॉपरेशन ऑफ हाई एनर्जी फ्यूल एक्टिविटीज सच एस एलमिनियम लिथियम और मेटल हाइड्राइट्स Hope you got more information about rockets and how it works. See you on the next video. Take care. Bye.